Good morning guys, welcome, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I just wanna do a little bit more work on getting my little itty bitty stitchery 15 minute snippet journal ready. So whenever I pick up the needle and thread and wanna do a Jennifer Coulston inspired stitchery, I've got a little journal ready to put the pieces in and it's based on a Reader's Digest book cover which I, in the previous video, have um, covered them. So they're ready. I started working on a bit of a base or a couple selections that I could pick from. But what I want to do next is bring you up to speed on my spine. So I did some decorative stitching on my two tabs. So they're ready to go. I've got my pages ready to go. So the next stage is sort of getting these pages into, into an actual book form. So that's sort of what I want to do today. We'll see how we go for time and we may get to play on the cover and start building something on the front of it. But we'll see. We'll see. Now, what do we want to do? We want to stitch the signatures in. And I'm thinking... I'm going to have the green to the outside. Let's just have a little play with that. Let's assume the green fabric is showing. All right, like so. So this is the front cover. This is the back. And we've now pretending that we've adhered the tabs into position so that would go there make sure everything's lined up of course and that's that's ready to go now you can um, glue at this stage if you want I prefer to stitch the pages into that before um, otherwise you've got these two hard um, covers in your way when you're trying to manipulate your needle and thread to stitch your pages in so but in the meantime I really need to decide if I want to see all the color on the outside which I think I do or it is plain on the outside and that's what I would see I think I want the color I'll leave the plain for the inside because then as I do my embroidery, there's nothing in the spine clashing with it. I can do pretty much anything in there. So there's a decision made. Okay, so let's put that aside. Now we want to stitch our signatures in. I guess the next decision too is at the beginning of this little series, I'd plan to do the three, but I'm concerned that that's going to be too thick. So I'm going to drop back to two because you know what ribbon embroidery is like. You can bulk up really quickly and then French knots and colonial knots in ribbon embroidery and it can be quite thick. I guess if I just do two signatures, which is, you know, eight embroideries and let's say it's still not full, what I can do is remember you have the option of there's the center of not stitching these two together so one two three four stitcheries let's say you've got a bit of space and you want to do another two you could put one here one here so yeah we're going to do just two i've made a decision i'm just really concerned that it'll get too bulky or will it I think it will. I just know that um, ribbon embroidery, for example. And you know the other thing, let's say you do your two and you find that it is still plenty of room. There's nothing stopping you one piece of this fabric. Don't double it. And you could slide it in between two of your signatures. So you've got plenty of options is what I'm trying to say. So I like to give myself wriggle room because you know me, I go off on tangents and I think, oh, maybe I could do this. What I'm going to do now is fold, fold these little spines in half 
and attempt to find the half line just with a couple dots. You could do it by eye, you don't need to go to this extent. That's the beauty of fabric books, they're quite, um, they're quite, you see by the time you do flip out pages, like let, yeah, definitely two. Let's see, what's that? That's nearly an inch, so let's go a little bit closer to the spine than further. I've sort of come three quarters, uh, three eighths of an inch out. So there's the middle, and I'm not quite a full half an inch away. I'm going to be in that, that line. And that way we can do some flip outs. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's the way to go. Because we might want to do a bigger stitchery, something that's a little bit longer. And it'd be nice to have that, that space. So there's my middle. And then I've just come out. It's not quite half an inch, 10 mil or a centimetre in Australia. And one, two, three eighths of an inch. If you see, it's not quite, not quite half an inch. And that leaves an inch, a uh, half an inch and a bit space. So if we do do you know, a flip out, for example, let's say that's now all attached and we decide to put a, a stitchery on the back cover that flips out to give us more space to embroider and then closes back up. Um, we've got a little bit of air there for it all sort of to fit. So I'm happy with that. All right, happy, happy. Let's move along now. So what I want to do is find the middle of these Work out my spacing. Let's have a bit of a, a gap. Bit of a gap. I'm matching the edge of the fold to the line. Let's just check our measurements. Now there is a proper tutorial where I actually, you know, take my time and show you exactly that's about an inch. We might come down a little bit, make it an inch at the top, inch at the bottom. Can't remember what I did in the tutorial now. And that's roughly an inch between. I think that that'll do. That's pretty good. Now my line and line. I always start at the outer edge so that I've got wriggle space. Yeah, that's that's going to work. Where's my pins and my needle? Now your stitches will show through on your spine so you need to take that into account that if you are actually I'll do it no I will we will use needle and thread you could do a three hole pamphlet stitch and if you didn't have all that decorative decorative stitching there on those tabs you know that would be your stitching what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tiny little stitch on the outside so you barely notice it <clears throat> but on the inside I can do you know a little bit bigger stitch so I'm just going to pin all that now so that nothing moves making sure that my lines will still marry up I'll put two pins in each tab I just don't want it to jiggle There we go. So that's just to hold it and to hold the tabs. Now you could even go to your sewing machine and stitch it into position. So I'm just going to go through there, through there, and just do a tiny little stitch this side, but I can be more generous with my stitch. This side but not too too much we do want to make sure everything's attached and it's not you know flip flopping around but a three hole pamphlet stitch would probably be the quickest but I'm just going to stitch it 
won't even notice those little stitches and that won't be going anywhere seems a bit crooked doesn't it just wait one second girl that's better so just a little stitch to catch it this side and then a bigger stitch and if you think, I'm sort of aiming too for my decorative stitches and burying my little little stitch in amongst them. You can just do so much to the tabs. Like I've shown you in other videos, you can add snippets of lace to decorate your little journal up. I don't think I'll get too lacy with this project because at the end of the day, it's inspired by a botanist's journal. Someone who's just sketching sketching flowers and stitching well botanists back in the day would have been boys and i'm sure they wouldn't have oh goodness me pins wouldn't have been going back to the ship and stitching but if the missus was with i bet she would have been flipping through the journal and being inspired gee i would have if it was me so that tab is stitched in and these pins are driving me nuts so i'm just going to end that off or oh, the signature is stitched in or the pages are stitched in they technically a signature is the correct terminology let's re-thread the needle so, you, like I said, you could use a different coloured cotton to make it more of a feature. Even though my, see my pages, they don't even line up here. But that's okay. I'm not worried about that. I had wonky calico. If you recall, it was a little bit on the, the twist. As long as my pieces I embroider are all the same size or the backgrounds, it's not a problem. So that's pretty good. That's very crooked, isn't it? Let's repin that so that's not bodgy looking. I'll pin from this side because I want to make sure my stitches are a little bit hidden. So I'm going to put my pins here and we're ready to go again. So coming up. On the stitch line or the marked line whatever's easiest for you to see put a couple little stitches there and then I'm just using my line of sight I can easily see I can see where I'm heading with it so I'm just gonna sneak along that that line <clears throat> and that should catch it I love the fact that if you're out and about, say on a holiday, you only need a few basic things and needle and thread and you can literally create yourself a journal on the fly. If this was a paper journal, you sort of got to have a few more tools with you and then, you know, paper to create a travel journal or something. There's some great artists out there that have, created literally stitched journals of travel they're beautiful their names escape me off the top of my head but um, I think Mandy Patuli is one of them that's worth checking out Anne Kelly is another now they're coming back to me I've just ordered some Anne Kelly books I may have already shown you them actually I'm just not sure when this video is going to be scheduled in in October somewhere so I got on to Can Do Books, an Australian book site, and ordered some books from Anne Kelly's collection. I didn't realise they were available. I think it was Anne Kelly. I know I got some wool embroidery ones. Actually, no, it was, um, now that I think about it, it was an article in a stitching type magazine. I think it's called Embellish. And Ann Kelly is interviewed and there were two of them. One was $10 and one was $6. I think that's where the Ann Kelly reference comes into my memory. 
So, and then the actual books I ordered were wool embroidery books for them. Susanna's next prompt is wool embroidery and I spotted a couple there. And I thought, oh, gee, that'd be good just to give me a few technical tips. Okay, so that is stitched. That little tab is now attached. Must be another pin, is there? Nope, oh, that's good. So let's flip it over and find our next point. Okay, got twisted around in that process. Here's our next one. Now we're not gonna put it in the middle. We're gonna just be just away from it a bit because like I said, we can always stitch in a page. That's the beauty of this. We tipping in a page would be the words that you would use if you were doing a paper journal or adding a flip out. That's another option is, um, you know, add a flip out. So you've got a page already here, put a piece that folds back on itself within the page. You, you look, you can do all sorts. That's why I love them. That's why I did um, a lot of journals with the Roxy girls. So they gave me the prompt and then I was able to just manipulate my journal. I'm just moving those pins to the front, I'm finding that more comfortable to stitch. I can make sure my spine is nice and straight. I can see my line. My other little book page is already there. So I'm now just gonna stitch. And the other thing too is because I've got a dark fabric on my spine, I don't really wanna see these stitches. So I'm going to <clears throat> stitch towards myself in the colored area. Oh, come on. I feel all hands today. That's better. A couple little anchoring stitches there and then just using my line of sight. And remember too, these pages don't have to be as big as they are. If you're running out of fabric, you could literally make your pages you know, that as long as there's something for your work to be stitched onto because it eventually gets stitched onto the piece that you've also created on the next section. And this is really just a little tab to, you know, hold it all together, the back of your work. So I'm just working my way up keeping the stitches either disguised over the cream decorative embroidery or just an itty bitty stitch, just enough to catch, catch that work. So as Jennifer does her little snippet videos where she just picks a stitch and shows it, and you then go off and have a play. And if you already own her three books, you'll be definitely flipping through those pages looking for also more little play things, play stitches. And you'll have somewhere now to pop it. And I like too that the size of a Reader's Digest book, it's not overwhelming. You know, when you're doing some projects and they're really big, you look at it and you think, oh goodness, that's like a month's worth of stitching or a couple weeks worth of stitching. Well, at least with this, it, they're quick. They're snippets. They're snippets of stitch. And having a theme really keeps you, you know, focused on maybe some colours, keeping it so that it's similar but different. I'm just working my way up the last tab now. Hopefully I'm reasonably close to all of the, the lines. Oh, it's be very reasonably close. <laughs> very reasonably. Just can't decide if I'm going to need those three signatures or not. But I've got room. Got room to wriggle. I definitely want to do some landscape stitching. Otherwise, you know, 15 minutes easily turns into 40 minutes. And before you know it, you've got, 
you know, something that's... Oh, I know a piece that's been kicking around for ages, whether it fits in this. When I was away on a cruise um, earlier in the year, I had lots of scrappy bits of fabric with me and I was working on Percy the Peacock. And I just one morning woke up and felt like creating a bit of a landscape instead of anything in particular. So I was just laying down whatever scraps I had. And I made a piece that was long. I wonder if that will actually fit in this journal and find a home. It's possible. Okay. So now we're stitched in. That's it. Ready to find a home. And we've got plenty of air. Look at that. That's great. So <clears throat> I could stitch in another signature if I wanted it. And it might only be one piece of fabric instead of the two. And I can tip in a little one there. Like I said, I can break these down into more pages than I planned. <clears throat> or I stick to the plan and just leave it at that. And then I can do some, you know, flip outs that are bigger, etc. So that's, that's them stitched in. What we'll do next is glue all this together, but I need to change my surface to um, a place where I can glue and grab my glue. So I'm going to pause the video and I will be back. Hello, I'm back. Got everything I need to get messy. Um, got a bit of a protective surface that I can put down and, you know, mix paint and muck around. Before I do, remember I was talking about a rectangular piece that I did on the cruise? This is not it. I can't find it. It's sitting somewhere. But I found this. This is a piece that I did some time ago um, where I was just, you know, mucking around. And I thought I'll just show you what I mean by tipping in and tipping you know, making a bigger page. So let's assume that this is now glued here. A piece like this <clears throat> is attached there and then folds and it finds its home within the cover of your book. Now it won't work because it's too big, but it certainly gives you a, a long space to sort of work within. This one just never has found a home. It really needs a journal of itself because it's like a whole story of bunnies and things happening there um <clears throat> this one I don't think will get as what would you say as pretty lolly as this but who knows who knows and even if you did uh, a piece like this and you added it to one of these pages in the center here because we've got this air you could stitch in a piece that flips out there and a piece that flips out there so that extra space would be quite you know handy unless it ended up in that space but anyway that's enough enough I think you get the general gist of it let's get these glued down now we have cladded our fabric with uh cladded as in added a decorative piece so you, you need to take into account that you need glue to go through all of these um, little elements or you run some stitching through now um, I didn't stitch it because you know I just didn't so I'm just going to make sure that I have plenty of glue and it um, catches everything now remembering this these tabs if they're not going to be featured like me and they're going to be underneath something i'm not too worried about you know how it all sort of comes together so i'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the first layer you could trim these away if you were so inclined you can do whatever you want but i'm going to make sure because i want it quite chunky and strong I'm just going to take a moment before we go too far and attach that to that. As simple as that. Let's just peel that back. Fabric is so forgiving. Let's get some glue to sandwich those two. 
And like I said, you could have used needle and thread, but this is a really strong way of doing it. I'll get that back there. That's forever together. Now we need some glue <clears throat> on here and here because that's then going to catch the cover. When you start decorating your tabs like I have, it does add a layer of, I guess, complications because you've now got stitching, you could have some lace. You know, you really need to have a little think about your end look that you want. If you just keep your tabs simple, well, then you don't have this problem. So I'm just going to line up my pages. I'm going to leave a little gap and just let that grab, which it has. And then we start the process again. But this time we're going to get the fabric down first so it's sort of working in reverse oh i did stitch those that see there you go i did stitch those together oh great all right so be it it's down so i won't need glue on that one because i did run a little invisible stitch around but i didn't in this one <clears throat> so there you go there's the second scenario that I was talking about. Oh, gee, anyone would think I'd planned that, which I didn't. I'd forgotten that I had done it. <laughs> Adaptation. That's the motto of the craft room. I don't like to think too far ahead. I sort of just wing it. Okay, so that's plenty of glue in both areas. And remember, there'll be something go over that. So it really is all about the actual visible spine, to be honest. Now I'm going to pull that up. Hopefully, I'm not ripping it off. And grab my wipe. <coughs> I want to clean that glue off the workspace. Okay. Now let's flip the book around oh my tummy's rumbling must be time for breakfast i did pop a banana in earlier but that obviously wasn't enough so now we're very carefully going to flip everything back out of the way and repeat bring your cover in a bit damp that's better and we sort of want to make sure our cover itself is straight and then bring it out a little bit because we want that little bit of gap from the embroidery and then square it all up if you had a grid on your um, surface you could you know use the grid that's pre-printed on your pad to you know make sure everything is as lined up as you want it to be so let's just actually move back a little bit because we need to do this step first a bit of glue and pva it's pretty solid like you could use craft glue but I don't know, craft glue can get really firm, really hard. So I sort of tend towards PVA because you sort of can still get needle and thread through it if for some reason you needed to. This side probably is not. That's it. In comes the book. So we need a little bit more glue here and here. It's very messy, but try and keep your mess. Take your time. Keep your mess, you know, under control. Silicone brush. I've talked about these before. 
applies makeup, I believe. I don't wear any makeup, to be honest, purely because I'm always in a hurry to leave the bathroom in the morning, get my day started. So the thought of standing there and putting makeup on just is not going to float this girl's boat. And think of the money I've saved, but I have spent it elsewhere, as in <laughs> my craft room supplies. So I'm a little bit of a gap from where this, the decorative stitching is. And that would be pretty well gripped on. I'll just have a little look. Yep, that's good. Let's have a clean of the mat. That's lovely. Get rid of the excess. Okay, lay that down and reverse. I just didn't do enough stitching here to attach that. So I will come back with needle and thread and just pop a few little extra stitches there to keep this tab to that tab. See, I just didn't do enough stitching. It was getting late at night when I was fiddling with this. Oh, I'd stitched this. There we go. And now this one. I put a bit extra glue. Like it does sit under the decorative piece that will end up here and everything, you know, is really secure then. But that might take a little while to get created, that decorative panel that will be there. So at least my little book, especially if you're traveling with a book and stitching in your work as you go, you want it to, you know, hold together. That's good. Let's put a little extra glue. Might as well do it while we're thinking about it. Get these little corners nice and glued that's not going anywhere now so that's it like i said there's an actual tutorial start to finish on creating a little journal like this but you know we consider you i'm going to consider that you're fully up to speed and we're ready just to crack on and get the job done so we can start stitching. So there's the pages now stitched in. Oh yeah, lots of space. Look at that, really, really good. <clears throat> so that spine ended up being um, two and a quarter inches, or if you're an Aussie girl, six centimeters so I've got heaps of space now to just go for it I would hate to not have that space and um, be limited by you know what I can actually add so I can definitely do a flip out here a flip out there I've got one two three four five six seven eight little embroideries that I can do and that's before I then divide one of these out and slide another two in I don't think that'll happen because, like I said, ribbon embroidery can be quite chunky. So, yeah, I can't see that actually happening. Okay, that's pretty good. I do want to run a needle and thread through there. So I'm going to very carefully do that and hopefully everything will still stay glued. <laughs> Degree of difficulty high. I think it will. Probably best you put the journal aside and um, let it dry, but I'm impatient. So before I forget, I just want to bury my needle in here and do this little job. And just catch. See what I mean by... Um, stitching your signatures into your tab first and my knot just pulled through. You can see how it makes it so much more awkward to work on the tabs 
if you've got the hard covers now in your way. Put the lid on the glue girl. So that's why I do that step first. And then, oh, goodness me. I'm going to change my needle. I've got a big eye on that. So it's just like losing the thread really quickly. So let's just drop down an eye size on that needle. So if this is your first fabric journal, welcome to the party. And at least now you've got somewhere where you can stitch and then pop your pieces and they're not just rattling around your craft room. I like everything to have a home. I don't know if that's just me. But I just like everything to have a little spot to go to. Just getting some little stitches in there. You can see how tricky this is with a, a cover attached. It's doable, but you know. Just a case of Slithering my needle through a little bit further along, coming out the back, catching it. That's going to be so much better. Just felt like it was flopping in the wind there a little bit. And there's nothing stopping you adding extra morsels to your spine. As the project continues, you might decide to add some little snippets of lace. And this is how you would literally attach them to your your tabs so it's you know you've got options you might do some really tiny little embroideries you know a tiny little stamp size or maybe a little bit taller than a stamp um and you could pop them on there so you've got plenty of options that's that's way better now I'm going to leave it at that because if I fiddle too much more with that spine, I'm just interfering with the gluing process. You know, you can already see that's lifted a little bit. So let's just let that glue. Might put a few more stitches through there. That's good. Okay, I'm going to let that sit. Stop fiddling. Yep, good. All right, I might um, pause the video, let this dry, clear up my mess, and we've still got time left. We might have a play with some um, a, a piece for the front of my journal. So back in a moment, guys. Okay, I'm back. My journal is behind me drying, so I'm thinking now along the lines of using this as my front and this is my back. That way, I guess if my journal is sitting on a surface that's a bit dusty or something, I've got a dark colour to protect it. Just a thought that popped into my head. And I'm thinking this is, you know, where I want to be with um, the actual front cover. So I've got myself here some, there's the spare signature that we didn't stitch in got myself some scraps I've got some hessian and I don't think I'll need any more of those fabrics so they can go to one side I did grab my box of tones that sort of work with it and the other thing I grabbed is some labels from my journal making days because I thought in here would be something to do with botany something yeah here we go botanical I'd like to include this flower definition of a flower a blossom from a plant made of petals and it's a bit boring botany I think it's botany now there is also a red and a brown bordered botany there's a green as well I'm talking about the little edge 
around it. It's probably a blue. I'll leave it at those two for now. I'll just audition them at the time. So that's something I would like to add into it. So I'm thinking this will get attached to a scrap of fabric. We also want to leave a little spot to do some embroidery in the style of Jennifer. So we'll need a little, little spot built in for a little stitchery. So let's see what we can do. I do have this green here as well. Maybe I'll work on the, the area of which I want to stitch. So I need to grab my neutrals, my bucket of neutrals, and see what's in here to um, stitch on. Something old and yummy would be nice. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and keep the lace out a little bit. <clears throat> I'm looking for a piece of vintage. Piece of vintage linen. Anything else deeper down? I think that'll do. Sort of looking for something. So I love that too. Maybe sort of feel like I need a bit of height. Just making scissors. I don't know, we might end up trimming it yet, but we'll just start with this. I'm going to start just building up some layers and then see where we go. So just bear with me. Yep. I do like this. I think it'll push back that brightness of that other one. So let's just trim a chunk of that off. At the moment, I'm just not even thinking about the flowers as such. I'm just putting down some bits and pieces to create a background. We've done this a hundred times. It's just having a fiddle with your fabrics. until you find something that you like. Now, I do want to put in some hessian. I've got some really loose stuff and then I've got this sort of stuff. Let's just have a play. Just to get that extra texture. Yeah, I don't mind that. Then I'd probably bring my embroidery up this side and then do the, the classic Jennifer where the little branches come out. She's got a recent little video that does that. See, I don't mind that. Yeah, I like that. So let's just get that pinned. And let's then have a look at these tags and see if we're heading in the right direction. I'll just swing that. It's a bit, that line there is a bit close to that line. So I'm going to swing, swing that over a little bit. And this top over a little bit. Like I'm fiddling now. When you stitch hessian down, take your time and actually put a stitch on the cross section of every point in that weave. Otherwise, you will find that 
it potentially could uh, unravel. So when you're getting your, your base ready, yeah, really take a moment to get everything stitched down. I still like this. I feel like I need a bit of rattiness about it. So we've got that little tag, I think would be good there. Oh, the little red one, let's just trim around that a little bit more. I'm not thinking the red, actually. A pop of red could work. There was a blue-edged one. I might not have any printed out. It's not worth going and printing out a whole sheet of them. The red is good. So I don't want to steal away the thunder of the flowers at the back and the flowers that I'm going to stitch. So I'm thinking keeping everything really neutral, to be honest. Yeah. Now I want this to sit on something. Maybe, maybe I look at bringing a bit of blue in this way. Okay, now we're, now we're cooking. I'm thinking of putting that on there. Yep, I like it. Let's be mindful of fabric use. Yes, Grandma. I guess when you are sewing in the depression, you get really good at saving every thread and every morsel of fabric to create garments to sort of keep your family, you know, in clothes. So you get quite creative with placement of pattern pieces. I might just move that pin up to there. Out of my way. And this little guy, he will be glued to there and then mounted on there or down a little bit. Might even make him a little bit off centre. I mean, I like that. That gives you more of a pop of the blue. If we do go off centre a bit, or do we just make it smaller by trimming away some of the blue? So I really wanted some of this in too. Maybe we leave the blue and put a bit of this craziness in and then attach out. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Just to create a little bit of interest. I could even turn that, have it coming up a little bit. Yeah, either way, that can be put in quite a few little spots there. I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit off-centred. But for now, we don't want that anywhere near our work because it is paper and that needs to be actually reinforced onto something and then put on. Otherwise, it'll just disintegrate. So let's just put that to one side and reinforce this little label. So what I'm going to do... Pepper is barking. And that usually tells me that she wants to go out to the toilet. So I'm actually going to pause this video and just go and check on Pepper and the puppies and make sure she's okay. So I will be back, okay, guys. Okay, I'm back. Yes, that little wolf I heard was Pepper wanting to go to the toilet. So I'm back. I think we've got about 10 minutes left of the video. So what I'm going to do is just to get this prepped a little bit, I'm going to use my glue stick, put some glue on the back of the label. This just helps that fabric and paper to come together so that it's a little bit more durable. And you can just then trim it off around 
Now, where's my... Gosh, it's been so long since I've made a paper journal. I just want to use that tool I used to have handy. Oh, maybe I don't. Maybe I've packed it up. I've started packing up my craft room, so anything to do with journal making is sort of gone into a box. And, you know, when I walk back in the room after letting Pepper out for a, a toilet break, I was looking at this red edged one and I'm still not convinced that it's not the right choice. So I thought, well, let's also reinforce it on this little piece of fabric. And that way, once I've done the embroidery, well, then I can, I guess, make the final decision. I just want to get that really stuck down. Then I can make, you know, the final decision on which one actually is best. I'm just going to cut these out now. And then I'll pop them under something heavy so that they attach. Now, just for extra stability, you could stitch around the perimeter as well. I might even do that on the sewing machine. I haven't used the sewing machine for a while. Poor old sewing machine. It must think it's been left out in the wilderness, hey? Once you start this slow stitching business, you just, I don't know, where I would have just run a, a line of stitching from a sewing machine, I'm just <laughs> not doing that. And I've just hand stitch it. The only thing I'll say with stitching into paper, you have to be really precise with your placement of that needle because once you puncture the, um, what am I trying to say? The paper, really fraying this. Once you puncture the paper, you can't get rid of the hole. So it's forever, forever there. So one way around it, if you really, really want to stitch your detail, like add detail, like stitching, is um, grab yourself a pen and mark your holes prior, like little dots. And then you've got somewhere to aim at least. But it is, it is tricky. I really admire those TikTok videos you see um, where people embroider onto, say, birthday cards. It might be a beautiful image. And they will stitch into it to embellish it. And I think, oh, my goodness, I'd do a hole where I wouldn't want a hole and that would be the end of that. Just... Trim that a little bit. I'm just fiddling here. I should be letting them dry. But instead I'm fraying them. I just can't leave well enough alone, can I? Oh, that's enough. Stop mucking around. Okay, let's tidy up the mess, girl. Let's have another little look. Like I said, I, I'm just not convinced that threads everywhere, that the brown one is the right way to go. And I honestly think it'll come down to what I stitch. There's the red one. Yeah, I still think the brown's the way to go at the moment. So the plan now is to let them dry. So I'll put them over with the cover which is sitting quietly behind me. And um, we stitch down this. I suppose we've got a few minutes, don't we? So I'm just, to eliminate pins, you know, I like to invisible stitch everything or tack it down. If you tack it, you can use big stitches and then you just remove those big stitches. That also works. And I do a little invisible stitch. I start 
wherever you feel the need to start at the moment. I'm going to start in this top corner and I'm just going to make a little stitch and then jump along about half a centimetre and do another little stitch. One thing it does do to your work is it gives you a little dimpled effect over it too, which can be quite a little detail that you might enjoy having. So just keep that in mind. If you don't like the dimple look, that little quilted look, keep your stitches right up near your edge. And then when you come back with a decorative stitch, you won't, you won't even notice your little invisible stitches. But this is just the way I get rid of pins. I hate having pins in my work because it's bad enough trying to stay out of the way of the needle, let alone having to dodge some pins. So I might just whiz down this outer edge now. And just secure it. Now there's nothing stopping me adding more fabric yet. I might yet add another little scrappy bit somewhere. Who knows? That's what it's all about. And in my mind, the inside of the journal would be little pages like this, all collaged together with bits and bobs. And then you put your Jennifer embroidery over it. So you might want to start putting together some little scrappy bits that match the whole project and then they're together with your little journal because if you're anything like me, if I want some more of this check fabric to pop up elsewhere in it, I best be getting a bit now and just adding it to a page with a, a pin so that when I pick this journal up in the future, it's there, ready to go. Otherwise, that piece of fabric could end up being made into a project and it's forever gone and you'll be like, oh, I'd like a bit of that blue check to pop up. So I tend to, I guess, cluster some bits and pieces together that sort of suit the little project. Now, the other reason I've created this is I'm going to be traveling a fair bit between Brisbane and um, <clears throat> the new house that we're building and going to be moving to. So I sort of want something I can take with me. I'll be able to do a little bit of filming there because I can easily take my iPad and my, my stand. But then it's having a project. So I thought if I'm up at the beach at, at Barham, I can take this. So I will definitely be putting together some morsels to go with the project so that if I feel like doing 15 minutes of stitch or collaging a page, I've got some treasures with me. I don't cut another piece because you already have a piece. Now the antique fabric that's in behind is down so then i look for something else i can secure that will also secure a few other layers and i'm thinking it's this hessian here so i'm going to just pick a junction of which the hessian crosses itself and put in a little stitch and that will stop it from fraying. It's fiddly. So I'm aiming for that junction there. Let me zoom in and just show you. I'm aiming for that junction next. Where those two threads cross and popping in a little stitch. Now I'm all twisted up in the back because I was literally holding my breath to do that stitch. There we go, it's down. So I go to the next one. And in the process, I'm actually securing two or three layers of fabric underneath. So sometimes you can be sneaky and do minimal stitching to actually achieve quite a lot. There we go. 
just working my way along using my fingers to support that flimsy little piece of hessian there we go that's looking good peppers wandering around I don't usually have my puppy dogs in my house very often. If, if they do, they're invited in as a guest and have a cuddle and a pat. And that's purely because I'm requiring a cuddle and a pat, mind you. And then off they go. But with the babies, I've got the front door open and she's got access to the front yard to go to the toilet. Just to keep her away from bandities. Just rough play. So I don't want... Don't want her roughed up by him in her, his raucous play. So she's trotting around. Hey, Peppa. She's just come into the room. Hey, Peppa girl. Hey. You been to the toilet? So her tail's flicking. So if the camera starts wobbling, that's who's responsible. What you doing, Peppa girl? Gosh, you usually have fudge in here. Fudge would be hearing her her clip-clops through the house and would be sitting in his bed thinking that's just disgusting that that hound is inside. <laughs> hey, Pip. You want to sit down? That's a girl. She's sitting here beside me. I've got carpet in my current craft room and I just don't really want doggies in here. But the next place, I've put down a, um, a tiled surface. What you doing, Pepper? I put down a tiled surface, so it's going to be so much better. Vacuuming threads out of carpet, and it's dark charcoal. So you can imagine, drives me bananas. So I can't wait for the next house. I've built my craft room to, you know, be a lot more serviceable. I'm going to call it a studio too. I'm going to I'm going to step it up. I'm getting fancy now. It's going to be my studio. I'm going to take the leap, go from a craft room to a studio. It's pretty much the same size. The only difference is it has a, a wet area in it that I can easily just wash out, you know, paintbrush. It has a table dedicated to my sewing machine over in against the wall. It just seriously feels like a little bit more organized. So I can't wait. So I'm just working my way down the bottom of this little snippety bit. Might drive me nuts when I'm doing the Jennifer embroidery, having all those little bits hanging around, but just take my time and get it stitched in as needed. Yeah, that's not going to go anywhere now, that little morsel of hessian. So I'll put this little piece back in the cupboard. <laughs> and uh, actually, I won't. I'm going to add that to my little pile of goodies that go with me with this little journal. I may be even inspired to go into the national park that's behind our house and sketch a flower or a branch or a twig and then embroider it like an actual botanist. Oh, look, listen to it. Seriously. You're batting above your pay grade, girl. thread to do the last just get that little piece stitched and then I must let you go I'd hate to think how long this video is but we've got a lot done I feel like we're we're ready let me just end that off Pepper's just checked out the cat bowl to see if there's any good little vittles in there that could be. Now she's going back to the laundry to visit her puppies. Here we 
we go. Done. Okay. So that's all secured down there. This is secure. It's a little bit crooked, but that's okay. Crooked is good. Let me zoom back out, guys. Forget that I've zoomed in. There we go. So, where are we at now? Let's grab the journal. It's glued enough to hold. Let's close the book. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be a lovely, chunky little, little place to play. And that will go on there. Love it. And that will go on the back. And that's what you'll see from the spine. That's probably the easiest way to show you. And then it's a case of which one of those goes into position. I might actually even do a few more because there's a few other words in there that sort of suit this style and maybe have a few on the on the um, piece of fabric. Like do a few more and just have them with the project because it's just another little element that, you know, we might be able to use. Okay, guys, look, it's 17 minutes of that section of video. Oh, my goodness, this will be, like, so long, this video. I must, must go. Otherwise, I'll never get it up to YouTube. All right, guys, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.